first of all, thank you to every single one of you for joining us for this. I really appreciate it. Um, I know you guys have busy schedules as high school students, and so it means a lot to us that we get to talk to each of you and have you be a part of um, these stories that we're trying to tell. So thank you very much, and, um, and we'll get started, and hopefully this will be kind of fun. So um, I know I met a couple of you the other day, um, and both of you, uh, Emma and Zeta, are juniors, or no, yes, juniors. At Lafayette. What about everyone else here? What what grade are you guys in? The rest of you. I am a junior. Okay. Maya. Uh, sophomore for me. Oh, Josh, sophomore. What about you, Maya? Um, I'm a senior. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Well, thanks so much, guys. All right. I'm going to go ahead and get started with um our headlines, our COVID headlines that we're going to talk about here. So again, these are from the University of Kentucky. It's just a, a kind of a, a, wasn't really a study, but just something they put out. They talked with one of their head pharmacists there about the COVID-19 vaccine. So um, our statement number one is the vaccine has been rushed, so it cannot be safe. Fact or fiction? <laughs> fiction. <laughs> Everyone agrees fiction? Fiction, yeah. That's right. Yes, they're saying that that is fiction. They say that the timeline, of course, from the start of the pandemic until vaccines being rolled out was shorter than normal, but they still went through all of the processes that you would do with a typical vaccine. Uh, with this one, though, every, things overlapped a little bit more, but it's still to go through all of those uh, protocols and precautions when you're developing a vaccine. Okay, uh, the second one the statement from this study, there has not been enough testing, fact or fiction? I think fiction again. Yeah, I'd say fiction as yeah. well. I agree. All right. That is what they state as well. They say that is fiction, that the COVID-19 vaccines, like all drugs, are, are approved for human, re uh, human use and that they do undergo uh, significant scrutiny and again, kind of um, like it being rushed while it, it was a quicker process, it still had to meet certain guidelines and go through the same amount of testing that any other vaccine would. Um, and all the clinical trials, of course, as well, just all of that was sped up and they got so many people involved um, to be a part of it um, because so many people wanted to be a part of this vaccine. Um, all right, next statement there is an advantage to having multiple vaccines, not just one that works. Fact or fiction? I think that's a fact. Yeah, I'd say fact yeah. as well. It should fact. be, yeah. <laughs> they say that is a fact. Of course, they say that one vaccine, um, just having one would be a significant achievement, but it is critical to have multiple vaccines that are based on different technologies. I think that just helps expand it to more people. Um, okay, another statement. We do not know what is in the vaccine. Fact or fiction? Fiction. I'd say fiction. fiction? Yeah, fiction. <laughs> right, right. We do know what's in it. I think, you know, there is sometimes some information spread out there that I don't, I don't know what's in it. I don't know what I might be putting in my body if I were to get the shot. They say uh, that is fiction, that we do know what is in the vaccine. It actually varies vaccine to vaccine based on the ingredients and the different companies' designs, but we do know precisely, um, specifically, you know, Pfizer and Moderna, the ones in the U.S., we know what's in the vaccines. Okay, another statement. We do not know enough about the side effects, fact or fiction. Fiction. Yeah, I'd say fiction. Yeah, I have to agree. <laughs> okay. And they do argue fiction as well, um, that we that we do that we do in fact know enough about side effects, saying that because of the clinical trials that it went through, uh, more than thirty thousand people have gone through some of these trials with the vaccines we're using and that we have been able to monitor the side effects. And of course we've heard that, you know, if you, if you have an allergic reaction to some kinds of vaccines that, that you have to be mindful of that. But in general, we know about the, the side effects that people may have. Um, okay, let's see. Let me pick another one here. I've got a few more. I'm going to try to, okay, how about this one? Um, 
COVID-19 will eventually go away on its own. Fact or fiction? Fiction. 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 Fiction from everyone. Okay, yeah, they do say fiction. Um, they say that it is unlikely that it would go away on its own. They do actually compare it to, you know, the common cold um, because that's what common colds are. And that is children, of course, we get a lot more of them. And as we get older, we build up our uh, immune response a little bit better. That's why adults don't get as sick as kids do with the common cold. Um, they say that while people with antibodies and, and building up some natural immunity that will happen for people, um, because of this particular disease, the vaccine is needed um, in terms of speeding up that process um, and allowing more people to be protected against the, uh, against the virus. Um, we've got two more. Um, all right, how about this one? A little more sciencey almost. Okay, receiving an mRNA vaccine will not affect your DNA or your genetics. So receiving the vaccine will not affect your DNA. Fact or fiction? Fact. Yeah, I think that's fact. Yeah, fact. fact. Okay, yep, and that's what they say, that they say this um, mRNA vaccine is uh, what they call fantastic technology, and they say that um, it has no way to get into your DNA. So fact there. All right, um, last one. Um, I haven't really heard this brought up much, but um, an argument saying um, vaccines are just placebos. Fact or fiction? Fiction? Yeah. I'd say fiction. They say fiction too, yes. That clinical trials do require certain groups to take placebos, but the vaccines themselves um, are, are certainly not. And they say that once a proper comparison between the groups can be made, all vaccines that are administered would of course have the ingredients um, that would help uh, with an immune response for people who receive it. So, all right, well, thanks for entertaining us with, <laughs> with those different um, fact and fiction uh, statements and questions and things that, that we actually have seen in news headlines from time to time. So um, I want to ask you all now, in general, what is your uh, response? What, what is your take on uh, a lot of the coverage that you've seen, particularly about the COVID-19 vaccine? I would say it really like varies from news source to news source. Like if you go to more articles and papers, it's probably a little more accurate based on, or like compared to social media, where more to like stuff spreads a lot faster, whether it's actually true or not. So I think it really depends on where you get your news. What have you learned about um, consuming this kind of news and how you have to learn how to discern fact from fiction and really double check things? What have you learned through this process? Um, I would say that there's a, a, always an implicit bias on most sources that you read, especially when you're on social media. So like TikTok, Instagram, and while Instagram specifically has done a good job of like, it, it, and most posts revolving um, COVID-19, I was like, see more about COVID-19, but it's important for the reader to understand the implicit biases in, um, in what they read and try and find a reliable unbiased news source. Okay. What kind of challenges have each of you faced um, over these last several months when it comes to um, learning about COVID-19, learning about the vaccine? What kinds of challenges have you come across and just uh, trying to make sure that you're getting quality information? Um, so like Noah said, social media, things spread like wildfire. Um, and especially with teenagers, they're, we're more susceptible to believe something that a lot of people are reposting or sharing, um, even if that's not necessarily true. Um, so forming like your own opinion and like Josh said, finding like a most like as un, an unbiased as source as possible um, has been super challenging. And then like, I mean, I wouldn't trust social media for <laughs> as much as like a news article for COVID-19 um, information, but it's been really challenging um, finding like a happy medium between like reading news articles that you feel are mostly accurate and then also finding like information on social media that accurately portrays 
um, the information that the article said, and so you can share it. But if someone shares something that's inaccurate and it spreads around, then everyone's going to believe it. Like I've seen it countless amount of times. Mm -hmm. um, someone just shares whatever, and then everyone's blown out of proportion. Mm -hmm. Nuts. Okay. Um, for the group we're talking to today, uh, the group of student journalists here in Lexington. So what sort of responsibility and role have you taken in the last several months, um, with, probably most likely with, with your publication at school? What kind of role have you played in helping get information out there about COVID-19? I would say it hasn't been like directly related to like the vaccine or anything necessarily, but um, connecting it more to our school and our daily lives, like what we're going to do for graduation, how's school going to lo look, what are our schedules going to be like, trying to help like our age group feel comfortable in this different time. Yeah. No, totally. I think that's that's exactly what you got, what your role has been, and it's been a really important role because I think students of, of all ages, and especially high school, it's just really a, it's a tough time and figuring out kind of what's next and you're really having to roll with the punches. So um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else that um, anyone who's a part of this group wants to add or include about the these headlines, the fact or fiction that we just did in terms of just, um, you know, some some both misconceptions and things that are truthful about the vaccine. Anything else you want to add or include or anything um, at all in regards to um, just being a student journalist in this time and, and trying to help others discern fact from fiction right now? I don't think I have anything. Okay. And that's fine. Nobody does. Hey, we're, we're good. <laughs> I think that ought to do it then. Um, I sure appreciate each of you being a part of this and um, and thank you to your teacher for helping us uh, organize this too because we really appreciate it.